disclaimer. Update changed all my microphone settings and I have no idea how to change them back. Uh, enjoy Echoes for Days, though it kind of works for the space that the next few chapters take place in. Also, it's hella sensitive, so if you hear dogs, pretend they're mechanical beeps. An Egg by Kay Lee Chapter 17 Naish didn't bother helping Kale stumble out of the jet. He could tell the younger scout was nervous about something, but he didn't care. Kale Six had officially lost any and all goodwill from him. Having said that, Naish had never seen the guy scared before. The man had always been, well, cheerful wasn't the word he'd use exactly, but it had always seemed kind of, well, it didn't matter. He was nervous now, and that put a pit in the colored man's stomach. He'd barely landed when he jumped out of his seat and forced the younger scout out of his own plane. The survivor, Max, the kid had said his name was, had already run over. Hell, Silas had had to hold him back from getting in the way of the landing. The scorning thing was practically catatonic until he managed to check Kale over, much to the scout's annoyance. Naish simply couldn't hold down a chuckle, as Max was a strange one. With some effort, he managed to herd the two towards Meg, for Doc to take a look, only to find her flying around the rooms like a mad woman, and Gallus from Farmer was kitted out through the mines. Could this day get any stranger? What's going on? He asked one of the girls who'd been learning the basics from Doc. Precious. They'd found her a year or so back, hiding out in an abandoned cell tower that had still been sending out bursts of signal. Amara went into labor an hour ago. Precious whispered excitedly, like it was some great, wonderful secret. Gallus is walking Doc through the birthing process. Isn't this exciting? Maish had to admit he was surprised. A baby? The first truly born citizen of the city? How had that not happened earlier? What's the holdup? Silas asked from behind him, and popped his head over Kale's swaying shoulder to get a look inside. We're having a baby! Precious squealed her brown curls bouncing along with her anticipation. I really, really hope it's a- Kale! The sound of Damien's voice cut off the girl's excitement as effectively as a lobotomy. The roar of that name practically echoed around the hangar. Maisha's surprise at the soon-to-be first city-born citizen was flawed when a scout leaning up against him was roughly ripped away from his side. He spun around just in time to see Damien plant his fist up to Kale's jaw. The man went flying, skid across the glass floor, only to have a wall of a man charge after him. This was one argument the Catonian was not getting involved in. He'd seen Dylan. The boy had somehow coerced both him and Silas to secretly get him back to the tower, and the small tech simply requested that they not ask any questions they already knew the answers to. Maisha put two and two together rather quickly after the small brunette had told them their mission and to keep it quiet. If Damien wasn't allowed to know, Kale had definitely had something to do with it. Obviously, when Damien had found out, the man would have been furious. He was screaming now, but no words seemed to translate understandably. Maish picked the steam coming out of the soldier's ears, but this, honestly, wasn't anything to laugh about. A snicker made its way through anyway. Silas got caught between a rock and a hard place, the rock being the desire to help pull the two raging scouts apart and the hard place being the fists they were throwing at each other. Max stood between them, in gobsmacked shock, for all of a moment before he tried to jump in, only for the both of them to grab a hold of him, keeping him back. You don't want to get in the middle of that, Maish cooed to the newest survivor. That guy's twice his size, Max panicked, his eyes wide with fear for the man who'd found him. He's going to kill him. No, he won't, Maish soothed gently his accent slipping because he was not entirely sure that it was the truth. This had only happened a few times before, Damien and Kale beating the living hell out of each other. Silas hadn't been around to see it, and, in all truth, he was handling the situation quite well. This was the worst Maish had ever seen the two first go at it. Kale beat up his brother pretty bad, the colored man explained. As rough as this is going to sound, he deserves it. You can't be serious! Max shuddered as Kale tried to defend himself, and Damien kept coming, screaming profanities and half-formed curses at him. 
they'll tie you soon enough, Maish assured, a tight smile on his lips as he tried to keep his survivor calm. They'll growl and spit at each other and leave a goo. They won't speak to each other for a week and then it's going to be back to their old ways. The particularly loud thud had him wondering if the truth of his own words. Trust me, it's better to let them have it out until the end. Whatever's going on out here, take it somewhere else. Moody growled, appearing from behind some makeshift curtains which hadn't been there this morning. Three heads snapped in her direction as she crossed her arms tightly across her chest. It's loud and causing my mother stress, she reprimanded. She doesn't need this racket while she's trying to bring forth life. Maish liked the girl. She had a spunk, but she was too new to be ordering anyone around. You want to break it up? He asked, cocking his head in the direction of the hangar. Be my guest. The girl looked confused for all of a moment, before she caught a glimpse of the fight over Silas's shoulder. Just as he expected, she cringed when she saw who was involved. Maish would have laughed as he watched the bossy bravado leak out of her, but the survivor in his hands was beginning to shake, and the scout frowned as it got progressively harder and harder to hold the kid back. For a half-starved rat, the guy had some power in him. Trust me, he tried to soothe Max again. It didn't seem to be getting through. His fierce pill gaze locked back onto the fight as Damien kicked Kale in the stomach and the man went down. You don't want to be a part of that. Whoa! Maish stumbled when the kid ripped himself out of the scout's grasp. Silas collided solidly with the door frame behind him from the force. The Cape Tonian's surprise only lasted a brief moment before Terra took hold of his beam. When the survivor sprinted into the fight, grabbed Damien by the back of his shirt and flung him clear across the hangar. The commander had just regained his footing when the kid began to change. This was the point where Maish officially wrote this day off as a complete balls up of reality. The sound of bones popping caused bile to rise in the back of his throat as he watched the kid grow, change, and literally transform into a mem. Oh, for the name of... What the actual hell? Moody screamed, and that seemed to jumpstart everything into fast motion. Maisha's gauntlet whirled to life, his body processing the situation faster than his brain, because what he was witnessing simply couldn't be happening. The mem was crouched over Kale, baring its teeth at Damien and hissing threats at him. Like, actual threats. In English, leave him alone, it spat, snapping its teeth at Damien when the soldier pointed his own gauntlet at the creature. Its voice sounded like gravel in a clock. Damien aimed, and it deliberately put itself in the way. It was protecting Kale? It didn't seem to understand the implications of what would happen if it got shot. Why is that man talking? Silas asked. His knees weren't shaking. That was a step up from the first mission. Good job, Silas. Hell if I know. Maish hissed, worried that openly firing on the thing would somehow make the situation worse. Then maybe they evolved while we weren't looking? He doubted his own offered explanation. It was the best he could do in the situation, but even he had to admit it was dry. That's impossible, Moody breathed behind them, but there was more awe in her tone than Maish thought appropriate. Get away from him, Damien ordered slowly, his voice deep and taking on what the other scouts had not so secretly called his daddy voice. Low, articulate, authoritative. Maish had been on the wrong end of that tone exactly once before, as a fresh scout not even having been outside for two years since the outbreak. He wasn't ashamed to admit that he had actually wet himself, wouldn't even deny it if asked. Damien could be one scary guy. You'll hurt him again, the mem defended crouching over the scout, who was, for once, keeping his yap shut. Whether it was from self-preservation, or because Damien had put an elbow in his solar plexus and he couldn't breathe, the reason wasn't quite as important as the outcome. I'm more likely to shoot you, Damien returned. It was at this point that Maish stepped back into mission mode, even though this was completely different from every mission he'd ever been on. He knew what to do with this. Wait, why was the man smiling? On the face of a terror, the way its lips pulled up was downright disturbing, but that's the only thing it could have been. Don't shoot me, it said, its muscles shifting slowly as it crouched lower. I'm not going to hurt him. No one was convinced when it stepped off the wounded man. It slipped up behind him and clung close, 
now using Kale as a shield of sorts, even though it looked ready to sprint at the first sign of trouble. Mayish was reminded of a stray cat that had hung around one of his contact's dorm rooms before the outbreak. Its eyes didn't leave Damien as it shifted Kale to sit up, helping him breathe. The tension in the air was so thick, a butter knife could have cut it, but they all waited and watched, something primal in them knowing that to make a move now might end in tragedy. Mayish stood perfectly still until the hostage took a deep breath without coughing. Now that he was actually looking, Kale looked sick. Kale to the point where the multitude of scars knitted over his exposed arm stood out starkly. The blood on his face from where Damien had hit him was bright red, along with the purple of blossoming on his cheeks. It contorted the scout's skin into something other. He hissed softly in pain when he was moved. Maish hoped that Damien hadn't broken too much in his fit of vengeance. Kale was an absolute terror when he was out of commission. Why he still believed the asshole would even be allowed to stay, given what he'd done, was a mixture of experience and denial. The nymph moved slowly, like they were the animals backed into a corner, as it took Kale's hand and brought it to its mouth. Mayish let off a warning shot. The bullet splattered blood on the floor, barely a centimetre from the nymph's foot. Do not. He hissed venomously. He would be the first person to admit that Kale could be an utter ass, but that didn't mean he wanted the guy to die like that. He survived the first time, the nymph said, cryptically appropriate words, because it left the scouts stunned just long enough for it to sink its teeth into Kale's forearm. Not again. Kale whimpered weakly, before his eyes rolled back in his head and he slumped forward. What the hell did he mean by again? The change was almost instantaneous. The nymph cradled the man to the floor as it began to shift once again. Bones cracked and skin shrank with the sound of a grape popping until Max sat before them again, blood dripping down his chin and Kale dangling from his arms like a limp fish. He smiled sheepishly before shrugging. I don't know either, he offered. Maish wondered if he should have just stayed in farming. All right, all right, I'm here. Aisha's voice broke the stunned silence. Her voice had never seemed so harsh. What did you mean? Maish was the first to move, even though he never took his eyes off the survivor. Kale found a... something. He somehow managed to mumble, finally dropping his hands as his gauntlets powered down. No one else's did. And he got bit. 